What if we never needed blood donors again? That's not a scene from a sci-fi flick. That's a biotech revolution already underway in Israel. And soon, maybe in India too. And today, we're asking a bold question. Can AI help manufacture blood? I'll tell you all about it on this episode of Point Break. Every year, 120 million units of blood are donated across the world. But that's not enough. We're short by 100 million units annually. And the thing is, even the most developed health systems suffer from shortages during holidays, weather events, or wars. Blood has to be tested, stored, and matched to specific blood types. It also has a shelf life. It's messy, it's expensive, and it's limited by how many people choose to donate. Now imagine a world where blood is produced in a lab. No needles, no donors, just tanks of stem cells, quietly making life-saving red blood cells. We recently spoke to Ari Gargir, CEO and founder of Israeli startup Red Sea Biotech Limited, who's working on enabling unlimited blood transfusions with its proprietary donor-free universal red blood cells for life-saving treatments and advanced therapies. I'll get to that right after a quick roundup of the latest in tech and AI news. India just dropped a 1 lakh crore rupee game changer for the country's innovation future. The Union Cabinet has approved the Research Development and Innovation Scheme, or RDI scheme, aimed at turbocharging private sector R&D in strategic and sunrise sectors. It offers long-term financing at low or even zero interest to spur innovation, support high-tech projects, and strengthen India's self-reliance. From deep tech startups to critical technology acquisition, the scheme is designed to de-risk and de-burden private players, making R&D more viable and scalable. The money will flow through a two-tier system, starting with a special purpose fund managed by the Anusandan National Research Foundation and then routed to second-level fund managers who will back R&D through concessional loans or equity, especially in the startup space. Amazon has deployed its one millionth robot, marking a major milestone in warehouse automation. But the bigger story is Deep Fleet, a new generative AI foundation model designed to make its massive robotic fleet 10% more efficient, cutting delivery time and costs. Built using Amazon's warehouse data, and powered by AWS tools like SageMaker, DeepFleet acts like a smart traffic controller, optimizing how robots move across 300 plus fulfillment centers. With over 7 lakh employees upskilled, Amazon is betting big on a future where AI and robotics work hand in hand. Ari Gagev, a paragliding accident survivor who once received a blood transfusion that saved his life, planted the idea for a future where we grow universal red blood cells from stem cells. And that's what Red Sea Biotech is doing. Let's get into it. Imagine a world where one blood type fits all. No donors, no shortages, no delays. That's the promise of Red Sea Biotech's universal red blood cells. Grown from stem cells, these lab-made cells are pathogen-free, high-quality, and ready to use without additional hospital testing. With uniform potency and global scalability, Red Sea is building a future where life-saving blood is always available, anywhere, anytime. And only many years later, when I was uh, scouting for technology for a company that I worked with, I came in uh, to know about a technology that allows to cultivate stem cells in a very high mass. And actually what we're doing is we're using that technology that allows to grow stem cells to a very high concentration, expand these cultures to very large, you could scale it indefinitely. And by that, you reduce the costs of production, the cost of, the cost of testing, the cost of raw materials. And when we reach such a scale, the cost will be uh, com uh, competitive with the cost of donated blood. The startup's process begins with O negative stem cells, the universal blood type for red blood cell transfusion. 
These are grown using a specialized technology in dynamic bioreactors, allowing them to scale production infinitely. But here's where it gets really interesting. To make this process efficient, scalable, and affordable, Red Sea is turning to AI. While AI isn't making the blood itself, not yet, it's already helping in vital ways. Selecting optimal raw materials, shortening development cycles through design of experiment algorithms, and in the future, real-time monitoring of the production process, spotting deviations before they impact yield. This means AI isn't just a sidekick. It could be the difference between blood that costs $400 per unit and blood that can be mass produced affordably and reliably in regions that need it most. And that brings us to India. India, in my vision, is the, the, the perfect place to go to. Israel is very small and limited. Uh, we have capabilities there, but the market is, is very small and the funding is small. India has everything. On one side, you have the unmet need. Uh, there's, there are shortages in India, and uh, there's a gap that has to be filled for, uh, for uh, blood supply. On the other hand, the pharmaceutical uh, companies, the bioproduction companies, the, the human uh, resources that are needed to support all of this uh, are the best in the world. So taking everything together, the need and the ways to, to, to solve and bring it to, to the market are, uh, are here. And this is why I'm here. Gargier believes India could be the ideal global hub for this blood tech revolution. Why? Unmet need. India has its own blood shortage crisis, world-class biomanufacturing talent, and a growing AI plus health tech ecosystem. Red Sea is already exploring collaborations with Indian government units to bring this to life, possibly with factories near hospitals for just-in-time logistics. And Red Sea isn't alone. Others are working on progenitor cell or synthetic blood approaches. But Red Sea is focusing on creating natural red blood cells in the lab, the kind needed for chronic conditions and immune-sensitive patients. Synthetic oxygen carriers might help in battlefield scenarios. But for the day-to-day -day lifelong need, like in thalassemia or sickle cell anemia, this biotech plus AI model could be the answer. But creating blood in a lab isn't as simple as mixing chemicals in a beaker. The challenges are multi-layered. At the scientific level, replicating what the human body does effortlessly, turning naive stem cells into fully functional red blood cells is complex. Doing this in a bioreactor at scale with consistency and precision is still a major hurdle. Then comes the issue of scaling up. Even if a lab makes a few units successfully, producing millions of safe, pathogen-free and cost-effective units per year requires breakthroughs in both biotech and process engineering. And finally, there's a regulatory mountain clinical trials, safety approvals, and manufacturing standards for something as sensitive as human blood are long and expensive. Add to that the need for massive upfront investment, and it becomes clear. This moonshot needs deep tech, patient capital, and long-term vision to reach the finish line. In five years, Red Sea hopes to commercialize. In two years, it may be ready for clinical trials. But the deeper message here is this. When AI and biotech converge, we don't just automate, we amplify life. From the skies of Israel to the hospitals of India, the future of blood might just be flowing through circuits and cells. That's all for this episode of Point Break. I'll be back soon with more stories at the edge of innovation. Until then, stay sharp, stay curious, and think AI, think AI.